Hi, I'm Chen Huahan, a researcher from Microsoft Research Asia. In this talk, I will present our work, Paddlefish, to harvest free GPU cycles of cloud gaming with deep learning training. This work is jointly done with Wei Zhang, Binghao Chen, Quan Chen, Mingyi Guo from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and Chen Huahan, Peng Cheng, Fan Yang, Ran Shu, and Yu Qing Yang from Microsoft Research Asia. Cloud gaming is becoming popular. Modern cloud service providers like Microsoft are providing cloud gaming service for players. Without owning a powerful GPU desktop or game console, players can still play high quality games from their mobile phone or laptop by hosting games on servers in the cloud data centers and streamed via internet. Modern GPUs are very powerful. Some of them are built for running games at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. However, streaming such high quality video over internet has a high network requirement like 40 megabit per second for 4K resolution and 40 millisecond latency for good gaming experience. Also, the device of cloud gaming users has limited capability like low screen resolution and without hardware acceleration for decoding high quality frames. According to a survey from Steam, most players are using 1080p screen to play games. Due to these limitations, most cloud gaming players can only stream games on 1080p 60 FPS or even lower. We find that streaming cloud games on this quality leads to a low utilization for powerful cloud GPUs. In this list of popular games, the GPU utilization of most of them is lower than 50% by running on a server with a similar configuration of cloud gaming servers. To understand the situation of cloud gaming's low utilization, let's briefly learn how GPU renders frames for games. First, game scenes are rendered frame by frame in a pipeline manner. The CPU possesses the game logic and prepares the rendering commands to be submitted to the GPU, and the GPU does the rendering computation. Second, Due to the different scene complexity, the rendering time varies greatly for different frames. Third, when the GPU is underutilized, there will be multiple fragmented idle GPU time periods. Our problem here is to improve the utilization of cloud gaming. How can we harvest the fragmented idle GPU periods? A straightforward idea is to run multiple games on the same GPU to improve the GPU utilization. However, we find this is invisible. Games are too random with strict quality of service. Frequent conflicts would appear when the game is rendering two complex frames from both games. The red figure here shows our experiment. We tested three games. Each of them only has about 50% GPU utilization. However, when two of them are co-located, the GPU utilization is only improved a little by about 20%, but the FPS of both games drop significantly. Some games detected the confliction and reduced the rendering quality, which could greatly affect the gaming experience. This is unacceptable for cloud gaming services. The lesson we learned from the last slide presents three requirements for co-location with games. First, we need to quickly capture the idle GPU periods in order to harvest them. Second, we need a more predictable workload so that we can control its submission to avoid conflict with games. Third, we need a secure solution that can quickly preempt the regular workload once our prediction is wrong. We find deep learning training is a good choice for co-location with game. Previous work have revealed the fact that deep learning training is very stable and predictable. It just repeatedly does the same computation on a different batch of data. Therefore, its computation and memory usage pattern are very stable. Also, the GPU kernel are usually very fine-grained. The execution time of GPU kernels for deep learning training are usually millisecond level and very stable. 
These characteristics are very helpful for co-location with games in collaborative manner. To co-locate cloud gaming with deep learning training, we propose our system, Palofish. Palofish's first instrument the rendering APIs of graphic libraries like DirectX to quickly capture the idle GPU periods. Palofish also controls the submission of deep learning training, which are only allowed to be executed in the idle GPU periods from games. Palofish will keep monitoring the execution of deep learning training to avoid potential interference due to straggler and contention on other resources like CPU, memory, disk I.O., and PCIe. The rendering commands are usually compiled to GPU kernels via graphic libraries like DirectX, Vulkan, or OpenGL. They all have similar APIs for GPU command submission and frame presentation. Panelfish just hooks these APIs to monitor the task submission to capture the GPU rendering time. As the last command of each frame, Palofish inserts a signal to notify the composition of frames rendering. In this way, Palofish can capture the idle periods from games. This design does not require modification to games. Once we capture the idle GPU periods, we can submit GPU kernels of deep learning training to harvest the idle GPU periods. A deep learning kernel is allowed to be submitted only when it can complete before the rendering of the next frame to avoid the interference on the GPU timeline. If a deep learning kernel cannot complete in the idle GPU period, it will be postponed to the next idle period. Sometimes, straggler kernels may appear that some deep learning training kernel run longer than our prediction. Palofish introduces two SLAs for games. For the quick interactive games like racing games, we use hard guarantees that immediately preempt deep learning training to avoid interference. For some games without strong FPS requirement, we may delay the frame rendering for one or two frames to allow more GPU kernels of deep learning complete. Our preemption is done using two GPU streams. Our deep learning training is submitted to the low priority stream, and an asserting kernel is submitted to the high priority stream once we want to preempt the deep learning training. It has a very low preemption overhead with 0.7 milliseconds. To reduce the loss of training progress due to preemption, we will periodically checkpoint the model weights for resumption. In addition to GPU cores, both game and deep learning training use other hardware resources. Palofish also guarantees deep learning training will not interfere with games on these resources. Games heavily use CPU for game logic processing and physics simulation. Interference on CPU will lead to FPS drop and the increase of game loading time. To avoid interference on CPU, Palofish uses the thread priority supported by most modern operation systems to set deep learning training as low priority threads. PCIe connection is used for data movement between host and GPU device used by both games and deep learning training. Contention on PCIe will slow down the data resource movement like texture and impact the rendering. We use the PCIe bandwidth reservation technique from Baymax for games to guarantee its data movement. Similarly, if both games data and deep learning training dataset are located on the same disk, they may contain for I.O. bandwidth. Palofish directly use the namespace isolation technique supported by disk and the I.O. priority to guarantee the game data loading first. Game and deep learning training are expected to use different networks in our assumption, so no interference on NIC and an underlying network. And games video stream encoding is done usually using dedicated hardware chip like NVIDIA's NVENC or NMD's VCE, thus no interference on the uh, streaming coding.
We evaluate Palofish on gaming server with Intel i7 CPU and NVIDIA's RTX 2060 GPU, which has a comparable flops with cloud gaming GPUs. We evaluated five popular games and four popular deep learning models with different configurations. To evaluate how much GPU utilization is harvested, we define a metric called harvest ratio that calculates the percentage of idle GPU cycles harvested. We compare parallel fish with three baselines. The Windows built-in game mode will only prioritize CPU process of games, but not GPU. A constant speed baseline controls the summation speed of deep learning training kernel at a constant speed. A more advanced strawman baseline uses adaptive speed that leverage Windows built in FPS monitoring tool mechanism like present mode to adaptively control the deep learning kernel submission. Here are the evaluation results. When the GPU kernel submission of deep learning training is not throated, the GPU harvest ratio is very high, almost 100%. But it greatly hurts the gaming experience with much lower FPS compared with running games in a standalone manner. The two baselines throttling deep learning training at a constant speed or an adaptive speed also hurts game FPS with a lower harvest ratio. Palofish achieves the best of both worlds. It has a high harvest ratio up to 85% without affecting the FPS of games. The major source of improvement of Palofish comes from its dynamic scheduling. Here, we vary the submission speed of the constant speed baseline. We find that the constant speed baseline will not impact the FPS only when it submits kernels at a very slow speed, which is only 3% of the original training speed. Instead, Palofish is aware of the duration of the idle periods that can harvest the free GPU cycles comparable to the 80% constant speed without impacting the game FPS. We observe that different deep learning models may benefit differently from the collocation. For example, when we collocate two different models, MNAS Knight and LSTM with the game Hitman 3, we find MNAS Knight can harvest over 70% of free GPU cycles, but LSTM can only harvest about 50%. The root cause is due to their kernel duration. MNAS Knight is composed by many small kernels like matrix multiplication that can easily fit into the idle periods from games. However, due to the dynamic computation of LSTM, its kernel has to implement complex logic inside the kernel, thus leading to longer kernel durations than MNAS Knight. The long LSTM kernels are only allowed to be scheduled when the idle GPU periods from games are long enough to fit them. It makes LSTM hard to harvest the short GPU periods, especially when the game is running on a high rendering quality mode. The sub-guarantee from Palofish is helpful to improve the GPU harvest ratio for models like LSTM with long computation kernels. By allowing to drop one or two frames from games, Palofish can provide longer idle GPU periods for LSTM model, so that their long kernels can fit. A soft guarantee allows LSTM to harvest about 40 more GPU cycles than the hard guarantee only reducing the game FPS by a little bit. This is acceptable for some RPG games or pixel games without strong FPS requirements. However, if we remove the pausing mechanism from Palofish, we observe the clear FPS drop because some straggler kernels run longer than expected. Disabling preemption will postpone the rendering of games and impact the gaming experience. So this proves the necessity of the pausing mechanism. Here 
Here we show the FPS variation of all the solutions. Telefish gives a very stable FPS compared with the baselines with high FPS variation and lower average FPS. We even observe the game reduces the rendering quality to keep a smooth gaming experience in the baseline due to the high FPS variation and the drop of FPS. You can see here under the bridge, the light has the worst rendering quality compared with the Palofish and compared with the running game in a standalone manner. Here is a demo video. We run the game Tom Clancy's Division 2 with FPS locked at 60 and the resolution 1080p. We set the rendering quality to the highest level. We collocate this game with the deep learning training model ResSet 50, training dataset CIFAR 10 with a batch size of 16. The left video shows the collocation using Palofish, and the middle video shows the running game in a standalone manner, and the right video shows the baseline of collocation without throttling. Palofish achieved the same FPS compared with game only without affecting the rendering quality. But we find the collocation without throttling will reduce the rendering quality of the game. In conclusion, we observe cloud gaming has a low GPU utilization issue due to the limited streaming quality on the powerful GPUs. To harvest the idle GPU cycles, we propose Palofish that can quickly capture the idle GPU periods via API instrumentation. It leverages the deep learning training's predictability to collaboratively and safely submit the computation kernels of deep learning training without interfering with games. It has a very low overhead of preemption mechanism to avoid the interference from straggler kernels of deep learning training. Our evaluation shows it can harvest up to 85% of idle GPU cycles without interfering with games. Thanks. This is the end of this talk. Please feel free to raise your questions.